Joining us from NDT Global in Germany, we have two Thomases. Thomas Mergala graduated from the Technical University of Karlsruhe in 2000 with a degree in industrial engineering. Having worked in the mechanical and electrical engineering industries, he is now area sales manager for inline inspection in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and Norway. His colleague, Thomas Meinzer, is head of GMI data analysis and UTILI specialist. Building on a background in electrical engineering, he has spent almost three decades in the UT ILI business, with his main focus being on corrosion detection. Thomas and Thomas will present a case study of a bi-directional, high-resolution wall thickness inspection of a subsea pipeline and its associated flexible riser. Gentlemen, the stage is yours. Okay, so good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our presentation on bi-directional, high-resolution UT inspection of a subsea flexible riser. My colleague Thomas Meinzer and me would like to give you an insight into the challenges uh, or ILI solution and the data results obtained during a project with the null sea operator Equinor. So I will start with the first two items of the agenda with challenges and our solution we delivered. And Thomas Meinzer will share results of flexible riser inspections performed by our company. But um, let us introduce the topic of flexible risers from a general perspective. Quite a great amount of the production is going through flexible pipelines and risers. They are typically specified for a lifetime of around about 20 to 30 years, depending on the operation conditions and um, need to be replaced usually on the bias of operation time. Here in this picture, you can see a typical multi-layer structure of the flexible pipe used in the offshore industry, whereas the inner carcass was identified as one of the three Tip, uh, critical components of the flexible pipe. On this picture here, you can see the end fitting of the flexible riser. Aside from the condition of the inner carcass, marked here in with the blue arrow, it is essential to determine the current position of end fittings. Yes, uh, sliding, let's say sliding of the inner carcass was considered to be the second potential weak point of, of the asset. Furthermore, the condition of the isolation ring marked in with the, with the red uh, arrow in the inner carcass and the vault of the end fitting was identified as the third weak point. So Equinor working with NDT Global since many years considers ultrasonic based inspection data as their first choice to deliver high accuracy measurements of the pipeline network in general. But with regards to flexible riser inspections, NDT Global delivered already outstanding ILI results for several of Equinor's flexible risers. So from this perspective, information from ILI's inline inspections concerning the condition of flexible risers may extend the ex uh, expected lifetime of the asset. But what are the challenges that we had to face um, in general and specifically in this project? What makes this project worth talking about? Yeah. So Equinor required an inspection of a subsea pipeline used for transporting gas and gas condensate from a subsea template to a template that was essential to the company's ongoing operations. The asset, um, or so to assess, sorry, to assess the asset and the conditions of the critical parts of the asset, which had never been inspected, uh, 720 meters of a 10 inch diameter flexible riser and uh, end fittings needed to be examined. In this picture, you can see the red marked areas where special um, critical components of the asset uh, are located. So we talk about this 
touchdown areas. We talk about top side connections to the end fittings, and those end fittings are also on the seabed. The challenging thing was also in this project, the challenging thing was that due to the system layout, the inspection had to be done by a bi directional tool, as uh, Uli Schneider mentioned in his presentation prior to me. This is, was a special ap application. And, uh, and this tool had to be capable to pass 3, 3D bands. So on this system layout, you can see the flexible riser starting at the platform and going down 322 meters to the seabed. There, uh, the riser is connected via, via end fittings to a 6.5 kilometer long 10 inch pipeline. And this pipeline is ending at the manifold. So without any subsea receiving uh, options. So as mentioned, due to the situation, to this uh, system layout, only a bi-directional tool would be acceptable. And uh, in addition, a free swimming bi-directional tool. The pumping of, uh, of a free swimming inline inspection tool in both directions from and to the platform was possible due to an existing three inch pipeline red, red marked here in this uh, system layout. So after careful evaluation of, of different technology options on the ILI market for inspecting the line, Equinor chose, chose our bi-directional ultrasonic service. For this application, we delivered a high resolution free swimming in an inspection ultrasonic technology tool capable to be pumped in two directions. And in Q1 of this year, the tool inspected the flexible riser in both directions and performed measurements of the three critical parts, as mentioned prior, of the flexible riser. So the inner carcass, the end fittings, and the isolation rings. So the recorded ultrasonic extent of data are the basis of our detailed analysis of the inner surface and spacing of the pitch between the flexible riser carcasses. High resolution recordings of pitch irregularities enable the detection and sizing of geometric stretching of these flexible risers. Furthermore, the inspection data delivered or deliver high accuracy measurements of the current position of the end fittings. So based on this, the pipeline operator can take steps to avoid system failures caused by flexible riser defects or any displacements related to the flexible riser coupling points. So at this point, I hand over to my colleague, Thomas Meinzer, who will share results and interesting inspection data recorded during flexible riser inspections in general, but also with regards to this um, project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. And I will now continue with the analysis capabilities and some results. So with the entity global UT tools, we are able to provide the following diagnostics in flexible pipe joints and risers. First, the determination of the position of the inner carcass in the end fitting and the detection of a possible spacing between the inner carcass and the vault of the end fitting, which would occur if we have a sliding of the inner carcass. Second, the evaluation of the condition of the isolation ring between the inner carcass and the vault of the end fitting. Third, the detection of possible deformations in the inner carcass. And fourth, the stretch measurement of flexible risers. So here on this slide, uh, on the left side, we see a UT data screenshot and in correlation, a photography of a typical end fitting design on the right. 
we have marked the three main areas of interest. On the data screenshot, we see the wall thickness measurement in the upper window and the standoff measurement, which is the distance from the sensor to the inner pipe surface on the lower window. The green arrow points to the vault of the end fitting. So you can see the vault area in the inspection data as well as on the photography. The red arrow points to the position of the isolation ring in the end fitting and the blue arrow points to the inner carcass. So in the inspection data, you can see this typical pattern uh, from, from the inner carcass in wall thickness measurement and also in the standoff measurement. So this slide now shows a comparison of end fittings with and without a damage. On the left side, we see the end fitting without a damage. And you can see that the transition from the inner carcass to the vault actually is smooth and we do not have any indications. On the right side, we can see an end fitting with a damaged isolation ring. So if you have a look at, at the red circle, we see a clear indication in circumferential position, which is caused by, by a standoff increase. This standoff increase may be the reason from a uh, sliding of the inner carcass, or it uh, may uh, tell us that the isolation ring uh, here is, is damaged due to aging some uh, parts of the isolation ring may be broken out. I, I want to emphasize that this damaged isolation ring and uh, the screenshot we see here is not from the particular project we are talking about. One of the NDT service capabilities is the detection of deformations in the inner carcass. Here we see an example of a carcass deformation in the transition area towards the end fitting. So uh, having a look at the data screenshot on the left side, we again see the vault and on the right side, we see the, the typical pattern from the inner carcass and right at the transition point where the carcass uh, meets the, the vault, we uh, see in, in axial direction uh, a deformation which is uh, caused by, by a wrinkle. On the, on the right side, we see a photography and I will use my mouse. Uh, here we can see this, this wrinkle in, in axial direction, which is corresponding to this indication in the inspection data. Here we can see the, the structure from the inner carcass. And this area over here shows the isolation ring I was talking about already. Uh, this screenshot and, and the photography is again from, from uh, a different project. We have uh, just used it to, to demonstrate uh, capabilities uh, of, of UT tools in, in flexible risers. So the following slides will now describe the approach of stretch measurement in, in flexible joints. The recorded data sets from both directions, so forward and back, backward direction in flexible riser, were analyzed for distance measurements between the single rings over the whole length of the riser. Here we see a, a, a sketch. Uh, explaining the principle how we measure distance between the rings of the inner carcass. And the ring pattern was evaluated for extreme values using the standoff measurement in four specific circumferential areas, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock position. To obtain a smoother signal supporting the automated peak detection using algorithms, a Gaussian filter was applied additionally. So this is a data example from standoff data explaining the peak detection. In the original data, we also see specific details 
from the inner carcass structure. So the upper window shows the original data. We see the, the average over all tracks over the complete circumference. And the data is recorded with an axial sampling distance of 0.75 millimeter. Uh, if we compare uh, the ups and downs here, we can also see the, the details which are correlating to the structure of the inner carcass. So this is the inside surface on, on this side here. And the reflections from, from the rings are visible here at this end of the waves. And uh, the upper part here with, with an increased standoff are showing the gaps between two rings. And after the data is smoothed for peak detection with the Gaussian filter, we see that uh, the original uh, pattern is slightly changing, but this is supporting the, the peak detection and also the measurement, uh, the distance measurement between the, the individual rings of, of a flexible joint. <laughs> So the distances between the single rings were, were plotted over the complete length of the riser. The results from the measurements in 12 and 3 o'clock position are displayed here. To enable a comparison, all results are shown in the same reporting direction. So the backward data set was actually reversed uh, to uh, make the, the comparison uh, finally uh, available here on, on those uh, drawings. So on the y-axis, we see the distances between the rings. And on the x-axis, we see the automata distance. On the right side, we have a sketch from this particular riser. And we see some, some correspondences. So for example, uh, in, in the first area, we see that the distance between the, the rings is slightly longer than in, in the rest of the riser. And the uh, ring measurement, the distances between the rings is changing at this position, which exactly fits to this slight bend here in the top area of, of the riser. We also see the correspondence to, to the band area, the sec band and, and the hook band. This area over here corresponds to, to the band area. So this is my last slide already showing data from the other two circumferential positions and a short summary about the stretch measurement. So uh, here we see the measurements from six o'clock and, and nine o'clock now. And uh, in, in the first section, as we saw already uh, for 12 o'clock and, and uh, three o'clock uh, between the start of the riser and approx 190 meter, the distance between the rings is approx 2.13 centimeters. From 190 meters onwards, both data sets show a steady behavior with a yeah with slightly varying distances of approx 2.07 between the rings. So the distance between the rings is slightly shorter. And in the bend area at 360 meter and further downstream, smaller ring distances have been observed as well. Yeah, so. Uh, we are now at the end of the presentation, and uh, I think we now have some time for questions. Perfect. Thank you, Thomas and Thomas. And yes, um, to the audience, please send in your questions now, and I, I can pose them to, uh, to NDT Global. So thank you for an interesting presentation, guys. Great um, to be able to inspect the, the pipeline and the riser in one go. Ho hopefully the client paid double for that. <laughs> But uh, great to see the, the data obtained as well. So thank you for talking us through that. You talked about the stretch of the inner carcass. Is that a common failure mechanism for flexible risers? 
Yeah, actually, uh, with with aging, we see that the the stretching of the inner carcass, actually of the complete flexible, uh, is is increasing, and we we have had uh, several consecutive inspection projects already, and uh, there we can see a clear, yeah, continuing stretching uh, for for flexible pipe joints. And uh, at the moment, it's it's uh, the information is used to evaluate whether the the overall condition is is still uh, fine for for operation. So uh, finally, it's the decision of of the operator when when that point is is uh, met when. Uh, they have to think about a uh, possible replacement. Thanks. Uh, we've had a question come in from Oleg RFF at Care for Energy. Um, he, he acknowledges that, that flexible risers are, are complex assets with different layers and says sometimes they have an internal protective layer or film uh, made from synthetic material. I'm not, not sure whether this particular riser did have that. No, we, we are differentiating rough bore risers or rough bore flexible joints and smooth bore flexible joints. And, and the smooth bore flexibles have uh, that uh, internal uh, layer additionally. In, in that case, uh, we can do the uh, evaluation of the end fitting and also the evaluation of, of the uh, gap a possible gap between the end fitting and the inner carcass, but we cannot do the stretch measurement. What we have seen in those smooth bore risers already is yeah, erosion mechanisms and that the, the wall thickness of this inner layer actually, actually was uh, slightly decreasing uh, over time. Thank you. So in this rough bore situation, um, you, you need a liquid to transmit the, the ultrasound, right? So yes. how, how do you um, account for the, the wetting and the subsequent drying of, of that afterwards? Uh, uh, actually, we are uh, inspecting uh, liquid uh, pipelines uh, mostly. And if we if this would be a gas line then we would need a coupling medium like like uh, water seawater uh, would would work as well yeah. uh, but we we definitely need uh, the coupling medium uh, for the ut inspection so in this project we we inspected the in water uh, the the pipeline was flooded and uh, cleaned during this this flooding so we pumped uh, cleaning pigs in front of us and uh, inspected just behind the cleaning pigs and when they uh, so both the inspection pig and the cleaning pig have been pumped into the, uh, to the top side uh, afterwards perfect thank you um in, in your data you showed the uh, the odometer distance on the x axis um, we've had a question from Hans Grutroy at uh, Grutroy Consultancy, um, just asking whether there's any slippage of the odometers and, and how that can influence the measurements of the, the gap. We, we have experienced uh, some slippage uh, already, but uh, due to the fact that we have at least uh, two, depending on the diameter, uh, we have at least two odometer wheels, usually slippage is, is not really an, an issue. Good. Uh, another question has come in from Jacinto Ramirez at Echo Patrol. Um, he's asking more about rigid pipelines than uh, than flexible risers. But uh, is it possible to perform pigging for a single rigid pipeline without problems? He's talking about uh, 100 kilometers subsea rigid pipelines. Yeah, this is our core business. So we are usually inspecting transmission pipelines with several hundred kilometers. This is a special application with the flex riser. And if it would be necessary to inspect, for example, the rigid asset after the flexible riser and uh, the 6.5 kilometers afterwards, it would have been done also by us. 
uh, it was not uh, necessary in this project, so we concentrated on this on this flexible pi uh, pipeline. But the answer is yes, it is possible, and this is a core business to do the inspection of, of rigid pipelines subsea or onshore. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, maybe one final question, just to to round off um, the session. You you showed the the slippage or the the stretch. Um, have you seen that over a period of years and see how that changes? Yeah, uh, actually a good question, Danny. We we have uh, done uh, several consecutive in inspections and and in particular one. Uh, in one case, we have inspected the same riser with a period of one year in between three times. And we could see the, the stretching behavior in that case that uh, we actually had a continuing uh, growth of, of stretching over the, the period of, of three years, which is uh, leading to, to a further monitoring of, of uh, this uh, particular flexible riser. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you for an interesting presentation and uh, a great discussion afterwards. Thank you, Danny. It was a pleasure. Danny, thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank Bye. you. You too.